do in Ultima Online. In other words, I can follow quests and eventually be able to create my own quests and I can do them, the quests that they give me, I can do as a single player and not be interrupted by anybody else because they have single player online and single player offline modes here. So Shroud of the Avatar uh, obviously has a 3D graphic engine, Unity 5. Uh, Ultima Online does not. It's, uh, it's um, what they call it, isometric, iso yeah, isometric kind of view, 70, 70 degrees, which we've known and loved in, in Ultima Online for years. It's very easy to get to know. It's, it's single hand movement versus two handed movement. So Shroud, you need to be able to manipulate your character with two hands rather than just one, char one hand. Uh, so a little bit of getting used to on that. As far as crafting and things, it's just as as crazy deep in Shroud as it is in Ultima Online with the types of items, the special items, the marking of items probably, uh, the making of items. In Shroud, they, you have to kind of learn these recipes. and UO, you kind of get handed the recipes to make. Uh, so some may be more challenging than others. But uh, kind of overall, it's very comparable with player interaction. The, the player combat is similar, PvP. Um, I've not been involved in that much. I've followed it. But yeah, you can go out and kill each other. You can grief each other if you want to be griefers. But Shroud the Avatar is taking a pretty strong hand on preventing griefers from disrupting other people's gameplay when those people are noticed to Correct. actually be out specifically to grief and cause pain. Now, I just so, want to point uh, out real quick, I'm just zooming around on your property here. Um, as you recall in Ultima Online, you had a choice of houses, but I'm looking and showing Winfield's little property right here, and we say little, because Winfield actually owns this whole town. And if you see where I'm looking out over here, you'll see all this stuff down um, below. And all those buildings and stuff down there are owned by other players, but Winfield actually owns the whole town that we are in here. So, just to give you an idea, this is just one idea of the type of house you could own for a higher pledge level, or you can actually buy your own town in the game, and you can run the town. Which is a big unique difference between uh, the two worlds. Yeah, exactly. And that's a good point, Laz, because uh, when we got involved in Shroud of the Avatar, one of the things uh, Richard Garrett asked us of Pax Lair, because he knew us in, in Ultima Online, he visited us there back in 1998. He said, how do you want to build Pax Lair in Shroud of the Avatar? And the first thing I said was, I want to be able to allocate and deallocate lots for people, because I don't need random people coming into my town and tearing up the place. I just want to be able to get rid of those people if they're griefers or whatever. Also, I want to be able to uh, to do. It's not really homeowners association, but it's more if we want, you know, certain towers on one end of the of the town versus the other. I work with people who want to be in that kind of environment or neighborhood. And now we end up with a better opportunity for us to uh, to um, service the cultural needs and desires of people who want to live in a a uh, very heterogeneous kind of kind of town where people are, have many different interests. Now, just for uh, example there, when you laid out Pax Lair, you had uh, two lighthouses allocated at certain points. And, of course, you had volunteers who wanted to live in those lighthouses and place their houses in those certain points as well. Is that correct? Correct. So we nominated certain uh, lots for lighthouses, nominated lots for for um, uh, for the towers and for smaller buildings, just to because the culture that we're trying to do in certain neighborhoods, you know, cheap side neighborhood and uh, old London kind of thing, you know, how do we how do we get people in, interested in that kind of neighborhood? Well, the, the buildings have to kind of conform to that as well. Uh, if you're on a larger lot, you may be a lord of a neighborhood. And um, that's what they can um, can they do they can do in different neighborhoods of Pax Lair. So we've we spread out the city lots and village lots and town lots to where 
people can live in different areas. They can form a, you know, have a lighthouse. Now we, we had somebody put a lighthouse up at our lake. It doesn't really make sense to have a lighthouse at the lake, but it's actually kind of neat over there because when you say, where's the lake? Oh, look for the lighthouse on the lake. It doesn't have any functional purpose, but it has uh, some uniqueness and, um, and we'll make up some story why it's there. So I hope that answers a few of your questions, and of course I'll be available. We're going to be uh, finishing up here this stream in just a minute. Uh, we were on a welcome quest that is held bi-monthly, held by Duke Gregor and uh, Winfield here. Um, we have a calendar. You can catch it on Avatar's Circle, or you can find it on nbnn.info. Uh, the calendar is full of events. But again, as you can see from this view where we're all standing on the cliff overlooking the town, you can actually see some ships out there on the water. Um, we actually have houseboats. Um, sailing is going to be coming out in a later on release. Um, just all sorts of stuff that will give you warm, fuzzy feelings that makes you feel like you're in the Ultima Online that you really wanted to live in to begin with, but couldn't. And finally, here we are 17 years later, and Richard is taking the dream to the next level. Um, and believe me, they are pushing the envelope with everything. One of the really great things I like to point out is our community. Most everything you see here in Shroud and the Avatar has either been conceived by, built by, or, um, you know, helped uh, be molded by the community. And the developers listen to what we say. Um, another thing, of course, is where else are you ever going to get a chance to sit down and talk with Lord British, Richard Garriott, um, go adventuring with him. Whoa, just jumped off the cliff. Bambino. <laughs> I think Bambino's dead down there. Yes, he, he is. He to make a skeleton. Poor Bambino. And uh, Richard Garriott actually comes into game on a regular basis, visits with the players, hangs out with us, occasionally joins us for an adventure. Um, and all the developers pop in, come ask us, uh, you know, they'll see, see us doing something and go, hey, you know, what are you all doing? Because uh, here in the game you'll find that uh, coming up here in about a half hour, I'll be doing the next stream, which is Magic Sweeper. And, uh, yeah, Bambino went bam, that's right, Alchemister. So what is Magic Sweeper all about? Magic Sweeper is Shroud of the Avatar's very first game show. Um, like Bambino, Bambino created Gust Ball, which is our very first sport in the game. And uh, with the advent of that, of course, the developers have now created the ball for the game, so we don't have to use an avatar. A uh, Magic Sweeper would remind you of... Uh, what was the game show? Um, deal or No Deal? Oh, okay. He's got with about, the boxes. Yeah, he's got about 100 chests laid out in the field. And Jenny Phoenix Fire, Kazan's wife, plays the hostess out in the field. And you get five contestants, and they all come up to the podium. He's at a podium like the host of the game show. And the contestants get to choose from a box. And they go out and stand on top of the box, and Jenny will pull the box and tell the contestant what they've won or whether they've been eliminated. There will either be uh, prizes of gold inside um, and or a trivia question. Or there will be a gravestone, and if they get a gravestone, the gravestone goes in place of the box, and the contestant is eliminated from the game. If they get a prize, the box is just removed um, from the game. The contestant gets their prize, they go back up, and then the next contestant goes, and this goes on until there is just one contestant. Now, after the first round, each contestant is given the choice, do they want to stay in the game and risk what they've won, or do they want to take what they've got and leave the game with their winnings to begin with. Now, of course, there's no fun leaving after the first or second round, so sitting there, you get an edgy a seat type thing because you want to see whether they're going to go for it first off, and of course, whether they're going to win the next big prize or whether they're going to lose everything. Uh, so it makes for a really great show and re great streaming. Well, I think I'm, I, I missed one, the debut a, a month ago, Yes. And I'd like to uh, 
make it to this one. So I, I'm planning on, of course, covering this one. And of course, last time uh, he actually had trouble getting some contestants. And if he has trouble today, I'm going to go ahead and belly up and I'm going to try and play as well as stream it. If uh... Well, maybe um, maybe I ought to uh, head to Soul Town and recruit some people. Well, it sounds really cool. I've been looking for Kazan. I haven't seen him on as of just yet. Do we want to put somebody there? We can have people start zoning too. We got forty minutes. That's in the old Vale Mark, I think, right? Uh, let me see. It's uh, four o'clock central, so that would be five o'clock my time. So we've got actually about an hour and a half. Oh, it's at four central. Okay, sorry. Um, that's yeah. what I'm seeing on the calendar. No, you're right. So we have a little time to take a break uh, between uh, now and then. Good. So we got about an hour to uh, to get our act together, get back together, and then um, find a whole bunch of people and get them all to Magic Sweeper. And uh, yeah, I mean, the first time I yeah, I believe it's only been held once. The last time uh, he was going to do it, there was some RIL um, issues that came up and it got canceled. But this is going to be. Uh, hold on, let me check the calendar. He's going to be doing this bi-weekly, uh, according to the calendar. So it doesn't say where it's located, though. I'm looking. It does not does not say. Just a zone chasm. And again, yes, it was in... Uh, Veilmark, I think. Veilmark, originally. I can actually take a run over there and see if it's still there. I'll have to and walk. There's a link I don't to the have calendar a for you, so you can just take a look at the calendar of events. That's uh, nbnn.info, the site I run. <laughs> You'll find all our previous streams. Oh, it's going to be so great where you have to walk everywhere. I mean, people are really going to get a sense of this land is huge. Yes, and as you know, we notice just looking out, you disappeared on me. I still got to get you. Yeah, I'm, I'm headed. To the uh, oh, you want me for a get, picture? Or get, what? get back over here. I want to get a sound bite with All you. All right. Actually, I don't have to stop the stream because I can just do a recording. But it'd be nice to have maybe you in the background with your uh, big old property here. Okay. Coming back. What kind of sound bite are we doing? Oh, just a, you know, hi, I'm Winfield of Paxlayer, and, you know, you're watching NBNN or NBNN, my favorite news station, just something along those lines that we can put out there and run during our loops so that people see the participation from all of our other uh, community members. I've got Amber Rain already. Uh, I've got Duke Violation. I've been trying to get you. You were actually, like... My second interview after Amber, and I just forgot to ask you for it. <laughs> and everybody I interview, I'm going to get a sound bite, and they go into the uh, replay loop. Here you are. Oh, maybe we'll get one. Let me try this. Overlooking the town. Because getting the castle in the background is a little tough. Oh, yeah, if you could just turn and face me. Yep. Hang on one sec. And then any time you're ready. All right, we'll give this a try and see how this text works. Hello there. I am Winfield, the governor of Pax Lair. I am on NBNN, the greatest network in New Britannia. Dragon speed to all of you. Ooh, I like that. Give me one more. You're watching NBNN with Duke Winfield. Hello, Lord everybody. Winfield? Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. 
Go ahead. Hello, everybody. I am Winfield, the governor of Paxlayer. I am on NBNN, the greatest news network in New Britannia. Dragon Speed.